Hi, I'm Emily Vane, Mr. Vane's daughter, and I am reading The One and Only Ivan, pages 221 to 240. The next morning, I watch Max's car slam to a halt in the parking lot. He leaps out. He stares at the billboard. His jaw is open. He doesn't move for a long time. A mad gorilla is loud, but a mad human can be loud too, especially when he is throwing chairs and turning over tables and breaking the cotton candy machine. Mac is kicking a trash can across the food court when the phone rings. He answers it, red-faced and sweating. What the, he demands, he glares at me. I don't know what you're, he starts to say, but then he stops to listen. Who? Julia, who? He asks, oh, sure, George's kid. She's the one who called you? More talking with the phone to his ear. Mac comes closer to my cage, eyeing me suspiciously. Yeah, yeah, he says. He paints, sure. We've been, we've been selling his art for quite a while now. There's another long pause. Yeah, absolutely, it was my idea. Mac nods. He's, a smile starts at the corner of his mouth. Photos? No problem. You want to see them in action? Come on down. Have a look. We're open 365 days a year. Can't miss us. We're right off I-95. Mac picks up the overturned trash can. Yeah, I think he'll be adding more pictures. It's a, you know, what do you call it? A work in progress. When the call is done, Mac shakes his head. Impossible, he says. An hour later, a man with a camera comes to take my picture. He is from the local paper, the one Julia called. How about you take one of me and the elephant, Mac suggested. He drapes his arm around Ruby's back, grinning as the camera clicks. Perfect, the man says. Perfect, Mac, Mac agrees. The photo of my billboard is in the newspaper. Mac takes, tapes the story onto my window. Each day, more curious people arrive. They park in the front of the billboard. They point and shake their heads, and they take lots of photos. Then they come into the mall and buy my paintings. While visitors watch, I dip my hands in fresh buckets of paint. I make pictures for the gift shops and pictures to add to the billboard. Trees with birds, a newborn elephant with glittering black eyes, a squirrel, a bluebird, a worm. I even paint Bob so he can be on the billboard too. I can tell he likes the picture, although he says I didn't quite capture his distinguished nose. Every afternoon, Mac and George add my new pictures to the billboard. People slow their cars while they're, wor while they're working. Drivers honk and wave. My gift shop pictures now cost $65 with a frame. I have new names. People call me the ape artist, the primate Picasso. I have visitors from morning till night, and so does Ruby, but nothing changed for her. Every day at 2, 4, and 7, Ruby plods through the sawdust with Snickers on her back. Every night she has bad dreams. Bob, I say after I soothe Ruby to sleep with the story, my idea isn't working. Bob opens one eye. Be patient. I'm tired of being patient, I say. This evening, a man and woman come to interview Mac and also Julia and George. The man has a large and heavy camera perched on his shoulder. He films me as I make my pictures. He films Ruby in her cage with her foot roped to the bolt in the floor. Mind if I take a look around, he asks. Mac waves his hand, be my guest. While Mac and the woman talk, the cameraman walks through the hall. He pans his camera right and left and up and down. When his eyes fall on the claw stick, he drops. He, he trains his camera on the gleaming blade. Then he moves on. Mac turns on the TV. We are on er, the early newsing, news at five o'clock. Bob says, don't let it go to my head. There we all are, Mac, Ruby, me, George, and Julia, the billboard, the mall, the ring, and the claw stick. In the morning, several people gather in the parking lot. They're carrying signs on sticks. The signs have words and pictures on them. One has a drawing of a gorilla cradling a baby elephant. I wish I could read. More people with signs come today. 
They want Ruby to be free. Some of them even want Mac to shut down the mall. In the evening, George and Mac talk about them. Mac says they're protesting the wrong guy. He says they're going to ruin everything. He says, thanks for nothing, George. Mac stomps off. George, holding his mop, watches him leave. He rubs his eyes. He looks worried. Dad, Julia says, looking up from her homework, you know what my favorite sign was? Hmm, George asks, which one? The one that said elephants are people too. George gives her a tired smile. He goes back to work. His mop moves across the empty food court like a giant brush, painting a picture no one will ever see. A tall man with a clipboard and a pencil comes to visit. He says he is here to inspect the property. He doesn't say much more, but he makes many check marks on his paper. He looks at my floor, check. He examines Ruby's hay, check. Her eyes are water bowls. His eyes are water bowls, check. Mac watches, his, watches him scowling. Bob is outside, hiding near the dumpster. He does not want to be a check mark. Every day there are more protesters and cameras with bright lights. Sometimes the people carry signs and shouting, Free Ruby! Free Ruby! Ivan, Ruby asks, Why are those people yelling my name? Are they mad at me? They're mad, I say, but not at you. A week later, the inspecting guy comes back with a friend. A woman with smart, dark eyes like my mother's. She has a white coat on and smells like lobelia blossoms. Her hair is thick and brown, the color of a rotten branch, teeming with luscious ants. She watches me for a long time, then she watches Ruby. She talks to the man. They both talk to Mac. The man gives Mac a sheet of paper. Mac covers his face. He goes to his office and slams the door. Something strange is happening. The white-coated woman is back with other humans. They place a large box in the center of the ring. It's ruby-sized. And suddenly, I know why the woman's here. She's here to take Ruby away. The woman leads Ruby to the box. She places an apple inside. Good girl, Ruby, she says kindly. Don't be afraid. Ruby inspects the box with her trunk. The woman makes a clinking sound with a little piece of metal she is holding in her hand. She gives Ruby a piece of a carrot. Each time Ruby touches the box, she gets a click and a treat. Why is she making that clicking noise, I ask Bob. They do that to dogs all the time, Bob says. I can tell he doesn't approve. It calls, it called, it's called clicker training. They want Ruby to associate with the noise with the treat. Then when she does something they want, they make that noise. Great job, Ruby, the woman says. You're a quick study. After many clicks and carrots, she takes Ruby back to her cage. Why is this lady giving me carrots when I touch the box? Ruby asks me. I think she wants you to go inside, I explain. But there's nothing inside, Ruby says, except an apple. Inside the box, I say, is the way out. Ruby tilts her head. I don't get it. See the picture of the red giraffe on the box? I don't think the lady is from the zoo, Ruby. I think she's getting ready to take you there. I wait for Ruby to triumph with joy, but instead, she just stares at the box in silence. I'm not sure you understand. That box might be taking you to a place where there are other, other elephants, I say, a place with more room and humans who care about you. But even as I say those words, I remember with a shudder the last box I was in. I don't want a zoo, Ruby says. I want you and Bob and Julia. This is my home. No, Ruby, I say. This is your prison.